Today we'll cover a couple of stories from the Panchatantra. Both of these stories feature lions and jackals. The first one has yet another take on the nature versus nurture debate. And in the second, we'll hear of an ancient version of a smart home speaker. Welcome to Stories from India. This is a podcast that will take you on a journey through the rich mythology, folklore and history of the Indian subcontinent. I am Narad Muni, the celestial storyteller and the original time lord. With my ability to travel through space and time, I can bring you fascinating stories from the past, the present and the future. From the epic tales of the Mahabharat and Ramayan to the folk tales of the Panchatantra to stories of Akbar Birbal and Tenali Raman I have a story for every occasion The purpose of the stories is neither to pass judgment nor to indoctrinate My goal is only to share these stories with people who may not have heard them before and to make them more entertaining for those who have In this episode we are doing two stories from the Panchatantra. The first features yet another take on the nature versus nurture debate. Let's jump right in into the lion's den. That is not a metaphor. I mean that literally. We are inside the home of a lion family which consisted of a lioness who and characteristically was doing household chores her three cubs were playing they were unimaginatively named cub number 1 cub number 2 and cub number 3 the lioness's husband sat lazily on the couch he stared at an empty part of the wall you can only imagine that had television existed back then The lion would be watching Nat Geo Tame or Human Planet or some other food channel. It's funny to imagine how he might have handled the remote, but that's besides the point. Right now, Mrs. Lioness wasn't very happy with her main man, if you'll excuse the pun. Dear Isn't it time for you to get groceries? she reminded him. The lion groaned. But what could he do? If he didn't get up and go now, he'd never hear the end of it. All right, what do you want? he roared. Mrs. Lioness was ready. Get me a deer, preferably a sambar or a bara singa. Make sure it's not sick or anything. The last one you got gave me a stomach ache. If there aren't any deer, other animals will do as well. Birds are fine or a couple of cheetahs. But just no monkeys, please. You know that cub number 3 has an allergy. And if you're getting any rabbits, get at least a dozen. Mr. Lion grumbled. and walked into the jungle to him this jungle was the equivalent of a quickie mart or a 711 the main difference though from your corner grocery store was that all the food was alive and secondly the lion didn't have to pay for anything he was after all the king of the jungle What gives the story away as purely fiction is that in this case the lion had the hunting responsibilities in the family. In real life, it's usually the lionesses that do most of the hunting. The lion walked around but had no luck in finding food. To be fair, there was food. But there were birds 
and they were up on the branches. They were too high for the lion to climb. And even if he started climbing the tree, they would probably fly off. So why bother? The lion saw a cheetah as well. But he figured it would be too fast for him. So Mr. Lion didn't bother chasing the cheetah either. There was a deer, but it was on the other side of the river. And the lion didn't want to get his feet wet. All this walking about for food was making him tired. So he laid down under a tree and hoped one of the birds would lose its footing on the branch above and land into his open mouth. It wasn't long before he was disturbed. There were sounds coming from nearby. They were howls and they were playful. Mr. Lion identified them as a pair of jackals. He was trying to recall what Mrs. Lioness had said. Her instructions had covered birds, cats, rabbits and monkeys, but said nothing about jackals. Oh well, two jackals were close enough to the exchange rate of a dozen rabbits. So they would do. The lion leapt out of nowhere and pounced on them. And just like that, both jackals were dead, crushed under the lion's paws. This was great. Mr. Lion was beaming with pride. He had done it. And without too much effort. Now, his family could eat. Well, at least he could eat, and so could Mrs. Lioness. The kids may have to eat some leftovers, because two jackals weren't enough to feed the family. And then, the lion saw a movement from the corner of his eye. Earlier, he had mistaken it for an insect. But now, he could clearly make out the shape. Mom? Dad? Wake up! The baby jackal said, approaching its parents. The lion felt guilty immediately. And then he felt guilty for having felt guilty. He was a predator. This baby jackal was food. With the baby jackal thrown in, the lion's cubs need not survive on leftovers alone. They could have a cub sandwich. The lion's share would still go to the parents, of course. So, Mr. Lion lifted his massive paw to strike the baby jackal. And then, he paused. The baby jackal was looking at him, not with fear or malice, but with innocence. As if the baby jackal were saying, Oh, please tell me, Mr. Lion, that you're here to protect me from the bad guys with your big, strong paws. The lion couldn't bring himself to do it. He couldn't crush this innocent little baby jackal whom he had just orphaned. The lion decided to take him home. Then his wife could crush this innocent baby jackal. The lion gently placed the baby on his own head. The baby jackal didn't have sunglasses and a lemonade and a lounge chair, but the lion's thick mane was a comfortable resting spot. He dozed off and quickly enough not to notice that the lion was carrying its parents in his mouth and racing back home. Mrs. Lioness had the same problem that her husband had. How could she kill the baby jackal? Look at him, so cutely staring at them, with eyes like those of characters from a Disney film. 
she told the lion to set the table for six. That puzzled the lion, who thought there were only five members in his family. Did she have some good news for him? Was cub number four on the way? Mrs. Lioness said it wasn't anything like that. It was a lot simpler. They now had four kids. Because yes, she had just now adopted this baby jackal. She would raise him to be a tough little animal. Mr. Lion did not seem to share her enthusiasm. He looked a little worried now that they had one more mouth to feed. I mean, he had only set up savings accounts and a college fund for three children. And more importantly, what about dinner tonight? Surely, she wasn't thinking of feeding the baby jackal the main course? That would be pretty gross. Mrs. Lioness told him not to worry. Their kids would eat whatever's lying around. Get it? Lying around. Mr. Lion roared. Roared with laughter, that is. He had a bit of a soft spot for dad jokes. The three cubs grew to love the pup and vice versa. They even bent their rules to let the jackal join their cub scouts troop, even though he was a pup, not a cub. At his wife's urging, Mr. Lion sometimes took his children to Pride Rock, even though he thought that was stretching it a bit. Were they looking to get sued here for copyright violation? Nevertheless, he took his four children and explained to them that everything the light touched was their kingdom, except the shadowy place, which of course was an elephant playground. Well, if you need kids to stay away from a place, it's a mistake to talk about the place in an awe-inspired voice. And it's doubly a mistake to tell them not to go there. So promptly, the very next morning, the four children were off to the elephant playground. But without the need for a full ensemble song to distract anyone. The jackal went happily too with his brothers. Maybe because he didn't know what size an elephant really was. Going by the size of toys in their nursery, elephants were tiny creatures indeed. Imagine his surprise then at discovering that the mountain they were approaching was actually an elephant. When the elephant turned around to face them, the ground shook as if there was an earthquake. The jackal was scared. He wanted to go back home to the warm, comforting arms of mummy lioness. But his brothers merely laughed. And what's more, they were getting ready to attack the elephant. The jackal pleaded with them. They should all go home now. He didn't want his brothers to get flattened. Finally, the cubs listened to his pleas and gave in. But all the way back, they kept making fun of him. What a coward you are! Cub number one jeered. You're worse than the cowardly lion from the Wizard of Oz. Cub number two added. Look out! Elephant behind you! shouted Cub number three in mock fright. But it was enough to scare the jackal again. And the three cubs burst out laughing. It didn't stop at home either. Mrs. Lioness noticed it and had the whole story out of them in no time. The jackal felt that this was the moment Mrs. Lioness was going to take her cubs to task for taking on such a risk. That should teach his brothers not to make fun of him, the jackal thought. 
but he wanted to add insult to injury so he confidently spoke up sort of on mrs lioness's behalf that being brave didn't mean they had to go looking for trouble but mrs lioness stopped him right there before he could go on no what the jackal said was completely wrong what was the point of being brave if you didn't go looking for trouble of course the cubs should take on any animal they wanted their father was the king of the jungle they could do whatever they wanted the jackal's jaw dropped and when all the cubs started roaring with laughter it only infuriated the little pup he gnashed his teeth and swore that this was the worst he had ever been treated how dare these cubs make fun of him as if he was inferior to them he swore that he would have his revenge on them by killing them for a second time mrs lioness stopped the jackal she looked at him and said that he was right no one had treated him worse so far that was technically the truth and yes he was definitely not inferior to the lions he had intellect and cunning and she did not for a second doubt that if he decided to he could carry out his threat but by issuing this threat he had crossed a line by rights she should crush him right now but in light of what she considered her maternal feelings she would give him one chance run run jackal run away and never return she said ominously the jackal stared at the lioness and suddenly he was back in the same old situation as with mr lion all those years ago a helpless little animal that could have been easily crushed by the massive predator staring down at it the jackal quickly tucked his tail between his legs and scampered away by golly he looks pale cub number 1 said cub number 2 disagreed seems more like a golden color to me you know how they say pride goes before the fall the jackal certainly lost his pride but whether he also had a fall who knows his unusual upbringing did put him in difficult situations though i don't think he actually ever fell probably because it's much harder for a four-legged animal to trip well that's that for that story in the nature versus nurture debate the panchatantra lands pretty firmly on the nature side a jackal is a jackal the panchatantra asserts and no amount of upbringing from a lion family can shake the jackal out of him it also makes a point about being self aware and knowing one's place in the food chain or circle of life if you prefer the second story also features a jackal and a lion this one begins with a rather well to do jackal she owned a pretty big cave in a rather affluent neighborhood good within commuting distance of her regular hunting grounds the water hole was also not too far away and what's best she had the entire place to herself she didn't need to share her home or her food or anything with anyone else and she loved her cave because she had a flair for interior design she had spruced up her home to make it as comfortable and as cozy as possible there were house plants some decorative wind chimes 
a cuckoo clock. Everything you might expect to see in the home of an anthropomorphic wild animal. Every day, she headed out punctually on her nine to five. Her occupation was to go hunting for food. Sometimes fish down by the river, sometimes a little bunny here and there, or maybe a bird or two. And sometimes, if she was adventurous, she might even venture near where the lions dumped their kill. As a jackal, she didn't mind scavenging. Truth be told, fresh meat and stale meat tasted the same to her. So this fine day as well, she went hunting, this time for birds. But if you imagine this to be an adventure, like wild E. Coyote chasing after the roadrunner, that's not quite how it was going to turn out. The jackal was a very capable hunter, without having to rely on incompetent solutions from the Acme company. Before the day was over, she had stuffed herself with birds. She was strolling home slowly, and though she was in a cheerful mood, she immediately sobered the moment she approached her home. There was something odd about it. And then she wondered, what could possibly be odd about her home? The stones hadn't been displaced. The welcome mat was just as she had left it. The mailbox hadn't been disturbed. The fake lawn sign, advertising that she had the best home security system on the planet, was as it is. And then she realized what it was. Footprints. There were footprints leading straight to her cave. What was odd was that the footprints weren't hers. A much larger, four-legged animal had made them. There was no doubt of that. The front right paw was slightly less deep than the others. The impression from the front right paw was slightly less deep than the others. The animal wasn't limping, but it was definitely not putting too much pressure on that foot. If Sherlock Holmes had measured the pressure, he might have attributed it to a minor accident while clipping its claws. But what was more disturbing than all this evidence was that the footprints only led into the cave. There were no footprints going out. Unknown to the jackal, there was a very good reason for this. A lion was waiting inside the cave. He had wandered the jungle looking for food. Because he had the same attitude towards hunting as the lion in the previous story, he decided to take the easy way out. He would go inside this cave and wait. Why bother hunting when food was likely to willingly walk into the cave and straight into the lion's mouth? Speaking of which, as the lion crouched in the darkness, he could hear some footsteps outside. He held his breath. The jackal cautiously approached and then said, What's the matter? You didn't greet me today. The lion was surprised. Was the jackal talking to someone? But no one was there. The lion was sure of that. He kept still. You're still so quiet. All I want to hear is your voice. You didn't ask me how my day was. There was a pause. Are you even listening to me, Cave? Why aren't you answering? I wonder if you'll listen to a direct command. Cave, turn on the front porch lights. The lion began to get worried. 
apparently the jackal talked to her cave every day and the cave usually must be answering back but what happened today why was the cave silent and then he realized the cave must have been quiet to warn the jackal that someone was there or maybe the lion had tripped over a power cord or something and rendered it inoperative if the lion kept quiet the jackal would grow suspicious and go away so he tried to salvage the situation there was nothing else to do he spoke up in the best cave like voice that he could muster hi jackal welcome home instantly there was a pattering of feet the lion realized too late that the feet were pattering away not towards him he hurried out of the cave but the jackal had already run away to a safe distance obviously she didn't need to point it out or maybe she did that the lion had been very foolish in speaking up of course caves couldn't talk if the lion had just kept his mouth shut for a few more seconds the jackal would have walked in assuming that the footprints must have been that of someone walking backwards or something sadly the lion had to admit that the jackal had outfoxed him which annoyed the jackal in no small measure she was a jackal not a fox why did people keep using the wrong term but she didn't hang around to dispute that she was off and she'd never come back to this home of hers it was a big price to pay but it was totally worth it that's it for this time a few notes the panchatantra are a series of dozens of stories organized into just five stories really each of those five stories never ends because at the conclusion of any particular narration one of the characters narrates a brand new story this keeps going several layers deep the panchatantra was written by a scholar vishnu sharma who wanted to help a king out by teaching his lazy children some life lessons check out the link in the show notes and on the site sfipodcast.com for previous panchatantra stories in the next episode we'll be back into the mahabharat main storyline we'll continue on with the pandavas traveling the countryside in disguise thank you all for the comments on social media and on spotify's q and a i can't directly reply to the questions there but i'll address them here on the show parasasapi thank you for the feedback and thank you for being a long time listener of this show thank you shalu for the honest feedback and i'll certainly look to inject a bit more humor in future history episodes thank you darsh and anivar for your feedback as well arush thanks for recommending the indus valley civilization story i haven't forgotten your earlier request with the indus valley civilization it's trickier because i have to use my time traveling skills to the fullest both to travel to the past to witness some things first-handed and to the future to the point where the script has been deciphered that means the research does take a bit longer so i appreciate your patience as i navigate through the backlog in the meantime if you have any other comments or suggestions or if there are any particular stories that you'd like to hear please do let me know by leaving a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or reply to the questions on spotify's q and a you can also find me on instagram and facebook be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically 
of new episodes. A big thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support and your feedback. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.